Welcome YouTubers, Patreon members especially, uh, mum and dad, anyone else who's watching. Today I'm going to be walking you through Golden Strings. Well, mum and dad don't play guitar, so I'm not really going to be walking them through it, but I know they're probably watching the video. Uh, I just quickly want to say, uh, Dex Romweber, uh, I just added him on Facebook, so we've become Facebook friends. That's really exciting. He's the guy who played the original of this, so I've, hopefully I haven't scared him off with my enthusiasm and uh, having a little bit of a chat with him about his playing and his style. Uh, yeah, but uh, hopefully, too, you've seen the cover that I've done. If you haven't, bring that up because that's going to be really helpful for you to learn this. Also, bring up the original song. Have that there. I'm going to walk you through the main part of the song uh, through, through the first time through because it covers most of the chords, and then we're going to look at the variations throughout. Okay, uh, I just want to thank as well, on the Patreon recently, I had Colin Knighton and Fip Ross join. Fortunately, they have names that I am not having too much trouble pronouncing, which is good. So thanks for that, guys. Thanks for your names. And uh, yeah, uh, what else can I tell you? The song is in E flat. You will need to tune your guitar down if you want to match the tonality that uh, you're hearing today. Uh, and that's it, guys. So uh, full transcription on the Patreon for members. Um, but of course... I'm going to do my best to articulate it for you. Although if you would like to hop onto the Patreon, a couple bucks a month, you can have access to just about everything. Uh, lots of transcriptions, heaps of lessons. Anything on my YouTube channel in uh, since January 2020, I have a Patreon post that has some kind of material matching and a whole bunch of bonus content. So let's start. Golden strings, guys. So uh, we begin with second fret on the fourth string. <laughs> Also put a little tone tutorial on the Patreon for this one as well. I I will do that because I'm using the Positive Grid Spark Amp and I've got a nice little tone out of that. So I'll pop that onto the Patreon for members. Um, you know what? I might I'll make it free. And if you want to pop over there and have a look, I'll put the link below. So we've got the second fret of the fourth string. We pick it. We pick it again. We pick the fourth string open, and we go to a C chord just your average C chord, we're actually playing a C slash G here, third finger on the G, pinky on a C, second finger on an E, we've got an open G, and we have a C, Let's give that a strum. So that's our first, well I guess it's our first three bars, but you could think of the first two as a pickup bar, but we'll call this bar three, so... Okay. Then bar four... We're holding that C slash G, and we just pick from the sixth string and work our way down, just like this. Then, uh, after we hit the fourth string, we skip to the second, play the first string open, second string open. So we lift that first finger, and then we're going to go to this C9 chord. There's a little bit of fuzz coming through there. I don't know if it's going to come through on the recording, but if it does, I apologize. So I'll just play that again, bar four. Play a C9. You're going to learn a lot of nice chords in this song. So, third fret, it's a C, E, second fret there on the fourth string, and we flatten right across the third fret like that. You might enlist the help of your pinky, mash those three like that. At the end of that bar, we flick our pinky out like that, and into bar six. So, we're still, so this is bar five. The end of bar five, bar six, go back to the third fret. So we're just adding the fifth fret there. If you're having trouble with that, just ditch uh, these notes down here and just flatten the three across there on the on the G, B, and E string. Just like that. That would be totally fine. Dex will forgive you, I'm sure. Might have even played it like that, but I'm pretty sure he yeah did that. So so from bar three. Try that again. Bar five. Bar six. Now we go to an F chord. Okay, you don't have to play a full bar F, so that's the good news. We can just do it like this. Still not the easiest chord in the world, I know, but that's okay. So uh, we've got F, A. We're barring the first fret here. C and F. Okay. Uh, and this is bar 7 now. At the end of bar 7, we add the pinky to the 3rd fret. 
Then we pop the pinky and the first finger at the same time. We keep the first finger on the second string, but we roll it up onto the second string only. So we can get the E natural there. So we're going F, then F add 9, F major 7, then F. Okay, so we return to that F at the end of bar 8. Bar 9, we play the E chord. And this is where it gets really tasty. I mean, the whole thing's really tasty, but this is really cool. So we've just played the E chord, an E major chord, open, second, second, first, open, open. We move quickly up to the ninth fret with the second finger and the third finger. And we do... So we've got nine, nine, eight. And this is an E augmented chord. You could also maybe call it like an E sharp five or something like that, but... Uh, augmented means sharp five, more or less. So, um, if we have a five note major scale, one, two, three, four, five, sorry, we have a seven note major scale. In that scale, one, two, three, four, five, our fifth degree is raised one. So, we, we use that in a chord, we get that spooky sound. Great chord, love it. Uh, moving along, so we hit that twice. That's now bar 10. At the end of bar 10, or halfway through bar 10, that first finger comes back to the seventh fret. Okay, so I'm using my second, third, and first. And then bringing that first finger back there, and that's the end of bar 10. So from the F, we roll back to F, flatten again, E. Okay, very pretty. Now that E type chord with the G sharp in it, yes, it's outside of the key of C, but it steps us into A minor. Okay, this A minor idea. So we can do that in music quite a lot. You can break rules to take you somewhere. That's the easiest way to think of it. We don't need to go any deeper than that. Uh, although I can assure you, Dex Ron Weber, he knew what he knew what was going on. He knew what was going on. Um, if you're there, Dex, drop a comment. That'd be really cool. Probably wishful thinking, but anyhow. So. Bar 11, we play this A5 chord, 5th string open, 4th string 7th fret, block the 3rd string, okay, and then we get the 5th fret on the 2nd string, 5th fret on the 1st string. And when I say block that 3rd string, it'll just kind of happen if you just play like an A minor chord, okay, like this, you'll find even if you flatten right across there, and you could go for that, but you'll probably find your 3rd finger might bump that 3rd string, it's okay, it's alright. Which sounds a bit tougher. So then the A minor, uh, this is an A minor 9, okay, or A minor add 9, you could argue either. But, so we've got 5, 5, we go to the 7, 7th seven fret, and that's that's the ninth degree of A, okay. Uh, and this is still bar 11, so we've got bar 11, bar 12, we get this chord which is an A minor major seven. Isn't that wild? Okay, and then we come back to an A minor. Okay, on the transcription it's labeled as an A minor slash C. Don't worry about that. It, I mean, it is, but it's not hugely important. Okay, so A minor, bar 12, back to five, five, five. Then we come up to an F chord here. All right, so 10, 10, eight. And that's bar 13, so strum. Then just flatten your pinky down to get the 10th fret. Then reach back to the 7th fret. This is now bar 14. Pull it up onto the 8th fret. That's the second half of bar 14. Back to a regular F. So that those two bars on F. Beautiful. So good. I love music. I love how you can. There's just. So, I'm really happy to have discovered this band. Thank you, Nick Wylan. I should have said this. Nick Wylan um, signed up as a top tier member, and one of the perks of that is that I'll transcribe almost anything you ask as long as I feel like it fits the page. But more joy for me because this band are great. I'm really. I'm starting to look through their catalog and go, this is really cool stuff. I really connect with what this guy does as a musician. So um, after the F. Bar 15, we get D minor, D minor 9, and we cut the strings off, so, and you can block the strings like that, if you please, and when we add our first finger to the 12th fret, so 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 12, then we do this 10, 10, 8, which looks like an F chord from before, 
but really we're working in the context of D minor now, okay? So it's a D minor seven, and then back to the D minor. So that was 10, 10, eight, back to 10, 10, 10. This is bar 16 that we're in. Now we're moving to bar 17, we're back to a C slash G. Okay, so from here, I just got paranoid that the, again, this happens every time I'm filming, I get paranoid that the camera is off. And if the camera's off and I've done all that for nothing, I would be devastated. Whew, it's still on. Okay. Because so I feel like this is a good run. I'm having a good run. So we got to bar 17. We strum the C slash G. And then we pick through. So we go 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 3. G. Okay, so this is bar 19 now. That was bar 18 with the picking through the C. And uh, halfway through, D, E, that's the second fret. And then we're into bar 20. Pick it again, open. So that phrase goes like this. And then we're back to starting the verse again. So... I'm not going to break down the chords for this. For, I've labeled this on the transcription as B. I'm not going to break down every chord. What I'm going to do is just play through very slowly and just give you the, the low down, the skinny on the variations. Okay, so here we go. So this is the verse B. Pick right through the strings evenly here. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, C9, again. C13. Back to the F, just like before. Then F add 9, F major 7, back to F. Same as before. Oh, I love that sound. This is, so this is bar 27. We just went through uh, from bar 21, the start of the verse, 22, right through uh, to the F chord was from 25, F major 7, 26, E's 20, bar 27. We're still in bar 27. Bar 28, this is the E augmented again. Back to the E type chord. Nothing's really different here. Slightly different rhythm really this time through. It's a little more flowing or a little more even, I should say. So there's an A minor major 7, A minor slash C. Now we strum a little more. Just like that on the F, then we flatten it for an F6. F flat 5, I'm going to just call that that for now. And we could also think of it as an F sharp 11 or F major add sharp 11, but it's just getting too wordy. So um, so from the A5, which is bar 29, bar 30, minor, then F. Okay, uh, now we're into bar 33. It's a D minor chord. Same as before. Now from this point, it, that was all basically the same. Nothing really changed, but from this bit here, we get a little bit of different picking over the C here. We go one, two, three, one, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's a bit of variation here. I didn't actually mention at the start, this song is in six, eight, so we count everything one, two, three, four, five, six. And it, it's all fairly simple rhythmically, which is nice. It's not... Uh, Oh, it's certainly not overcomplicated. So we'll go from the C slash G in bar 35 after so we've come off the D minor. C slash G. Then we do a G. Six, four, three. We strum from the third string down. And we're just holding the third fret there. So open, open, third. Then lift your finger. This is the end of bar 37, bar 38. We play a G7, but just the top part. Uh, and then, so there's so many ways to play chords, guys. This is this demonstrates this beautifully. You don't have to fret every note, every chord all the time. You know, this is really delicately treated, but also with this rock and roll heavy hand. That's just another charm of the song. So that's this is 38. And then we hit the sixth string on the G. The A, B, and then we're back onto a C. All right. 
right, so this is bar 39. I'll just play into that again. Bar 39. So, uh, sorry, this is a little tricky this bit. So, one, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah, it's like... That's right. This is this little rhythm here is a little tricky. So, I'll play from the G. So that's a, that sort of stumbles into the second half of the bar. One, two, three. And you might pick it down up. Like that. One, two, three. Okay, so that's that next little bit. I've just played ahead there. I'm going to go one more time from bar 37. Fourth string, I'm picking up on the third string. Strumming from the fourth string down. I pick the fifth string twice. Now we're into bar 40. Just two, three. Now we play the open fourth string. And what we do here is we slide into the fifth fret on the fifth string. So bar 41. And that takes us through bar 42. And what I'm doing there is I'm going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I'm making sure my third finger is nice and tall so I'm not blocking the fourth string because we're actually hitting fifth string and fourth string together. Then I'm hitting the fourth string twice. And I'm repeating that. Bar 40, that goes through 42. Bar 43, we hit the fourth string open. Then one, two, hit the G here, and we play this G13. Great chord, great chord. And we strum it again. I just realized I put my third finger in the wrong spot. Put your third finger on the fifth string. So 43. Okay, then we strum it again. And we lift the pinky, this is bar 44 now. That was halfway through bar 44. We lift that pinky up, and we get a regular G7. So G13, three, five, three, four, pinky on the second string, fifth fret. And I dare say my third finger is probably blocking that fourth string. We're probably not really hearing it there. Okay, um, that note there, don't really need it. Okay, as long as you get up to that second string. So, then lift up your pinky. Regular G7. We're up to verse C, third verse. Okay. Um, again, nothing particularly different here. I tell you, what, I'm just going to play through it really slow. And by this stage, if you've learnt the first two parts, I think you can almost follow along. Okay. Uh, if you've got the transcription, even better. But I want to just get a little lighter on detail. All right. I want you to use your ear, use your eyes, and see what you can find. Okay. So let me just play through this nice and steady. I'll have to scroll down in a moment, but that's okay. Bar 45. Okay, bar 46, we pick straight through. C9. Hang on a little. So that's a slightly different rhythm. So the only real difference there is we strum the E. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so it gets a little more detailed with the strumming here, but it's the same chords. So I'll go from the F. From the E, this is bar 51. That's great. And then we get this little rhythm when we return to the regular E. So... Now onto the A chord. So we get these nice little open strums here. I'm not just going to play through it slowly and not tell you what's going on because this gets a little interesting here. It gets a little rough and ready and it's good. It's really good stuff. Um, can you tell I'm enjoying myself on this one? I mean, I enjoy myself on all of them, but I don't know. There's something about this one. It's just so guitar-y and... Yeah, couldn't have, you couldn't have done anything else with this piece. So here we go. Hit them open. Five, six, seven. Okay. Then jump to your F chord. You could use your second finger here. 
Then when you, oh, sorry, you could use your third finger here. Then when we slide up to the F, you can actually leave your third finger there. So that's a bit tricky, that part. Um, this is, by the way, this is bar 52, uh, bar 51 is where we go to the E. 52. same chords we used before but the rhythm's now changed around and we've introduced this kind of random sounding F chord so again it's that whole sharp 5 sorry flat 5 or sharp 11 idea okay so bar 55 1 2 3 4 5 6 1 2 so that's the F flat 5 we're on to the D minor now. We put our first finger straight across. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. So same as before, but a little bit more strumming. Pick four, third, seven. Strum, strum, strum with the pinky down. Strum to there. And we actually get a bit strummy here. So we uh, bar 58. That, sorry, that all happens really, really quickly. What I'll do, I'll just play through that whole section just nice and steady. Okay, so I'm going to go from that E. Except I should have just strummed C. So from bar 59, when I hit that C, you kind of take off. Go to a G chord. Back to, so this is now, well, that was 61, 62, this is bar 63. So we switch to, you saw there, me counting through the bars with the C on the G, we then switch to a C9. And now we have the bridge. Okay, so for the bridge, uh, we go to an F6 chord. So that goes 8, 10, 10, 10, 10. And you'll notice that uh, he uses different chords throughout. Like sometimes he plays the G like this. Sometimes he plays a G like that. This is a guy who knew his instrument to, uh, you know, a high level. He, he just had different ways. Okay, I'm going to play this G. I'm going to play this G. Um, you know, I see more and more people talk about not needing theory, especially in those, you know, snake oil type. You don't need theory. You know, why learn boring? Well, fine, but you're not going to sound like this guy. You're going to have a hard time doing stuff this interesting and it's not sometimes it's not about theory and scales sometimes it's just it's just about knowing your instrument which can happen from just playing for 20 years you may not do theory it doesn't mean you don't know your instrument but i almost feel like these guys make out there's just a shortcut and you don't even need to know your instrument there is some inherent theory and in even just playing every day and learning new songs for 20 years you still anyway i'm off i'm off track so bridge d 8 10 10 10 like that okay so bar that finger right across or you can do an A chord with the pinky there like that we do two bars of that all down strokes then we switch to an F minor 8, 10, 10, 8, 10 sorry 8, 10, 10, 9, 8 now I'm worried I've been saying everything wrong then F minor 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 then C so that's the same same chord we did from the F, uh, but we don't need that extra note at the bottom. So again, you could play it like an A chord by your first finger from the third to the third, or you could crush your third finger across fourth, third, and second string at the fifth fret, and don't worry about the first string if you don't want, if you don't want to. So uh, so we've got F six. At that 
point, he does actually shift the rhythm a little. He's going. Then we go to an A7. And this one's 5, 7, G. Oh, I should say A, E, G, C sharp, E, A, or uh, it's 5, 7, 5, 6. All right, 5, 5. Uh, and what I hear in that part when he uses the A7, he kind of. Or, or I think you might even have that pinky down there on the 8th fret. Okay, uh, straight away, but you don't hear it straight away. So what we get is this. It sort of rolls down here a little. And then puts a bit more emphasis on those upper strings. I've just transcribed it with the pinky down for the whole thing, um, but you could even have it off. And just add it like that for the second half of bar 72. So that's the A7 chord. Then we get into the D chord, bar 73. Same rhythm, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And just make sure you're strumming that down, down, up, down, 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 down. It's gonna make a lot more sense, okay, when you're playing that. So yeah, just one bar of D. I've just played it 15 times then. Uh, I'll just go from the C, from bar 71. Okay, so D. And then we go to this uh, G uh, right up here. G slash D, because I've got that note there too. 10, 10, 12, 12, 12. And then just flatten across a little more, you'll get the first string. Like that, so. It's in there, it's on the recording, have a listen. Back to a C chord. And 76, and then a G7. Uh, sorry, G7. So, same as the A7 we played, but back at the third fret. And I think we covered the G7 before. Um, actually, I've got it written here as just a regular G. I guess you can choose. I played as a regular G, I think. I think I might have transcribed that wrong. My apologies. So, 3, 5, 5, 4. So, 1, 2, 3. Then pick your pinky up. Alright, this is 77 by the way. Put it on the second string at the fifth fret. We're doing that lick again with a G13. G7. Now we're up to verse E. It's a bit of a long one, this one, isn't it? Wow, we've already been going for. Yeah, this is a long one. Well, that's okay, hey. It's because there's a lot of good stuff in it. And if you've hung on this far, if you're here, put a comment. Tell me the time. What time did I mention this? Put a comment. I want to know who's still in, who's still up at this hour watching this and learning. So for the for verse E, let's have a little look. I'm just gonna again, I'll just play through and see what we find. Bar 79, 80. C9, 82, same as before, 83, F9, E. Open. Okay, so we go. We open up early. So we go. I'm sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six. So for that bar, you do the E augmented back to E thing with the strumming. Then A five or A minor. At this point here, it's a little simpler uh, in terms of what we do with the left hand, but we strum right through like this. So we go. So you don't have to go to the A minor major 7 this time around. So for bar 87 and 88... Oh, oh, my apologies. Bar 87, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Take your, just drop the finger. Fingers there and play open so we can get up to the F. Let go. D minor. Yeah, this time around, he doesn't actually go from the D minor to a C. He goes from the D minor. Let's go. And it's a little rusty coming out of there. It's not, you know, it's not packaged up perfectly with, here's the D minor, here's the G. There's a little bit of a kerfuffle getting from one to the other. Love it. It's it's raw, it's real. And I believe this is a live recording too. So, because at the end you hear people cheering. It was such a good recording considering. Um, I just want to make sure I've covered that 
thoroughly and you know what's going on. So really, it's just about adding that rawness of moving between the chords. <laughs> bit of gristle in there you're allowed to go have a bit of fun with the right hand get a little messy between the chords sounds really cool you'll notice i used my thumb at the end there That's not bad. you can do that as well I, I lose the fifth string i drop the fifth string out i just yeah but there's options if you you know happen to have a dodgy first finger or something so that guys took us right through to bar 94 with the g13 and the g7 we're up to verse F. Can you imagine how long this t took to transcribe? A long time. C slash G. Nothing different here. F add 9. F major 7, just rolling down. Now we take off with strumming here. Now we incorporate the strumming and we incorporate all those interesting little chords all together. So it gets wild here and it's a lot of fun. So I'll go from the E bar 101. So we, we jump to the O's there. Let me just play that for you again so you can hear that change. So. a little gristle going from the D minor back to the C here. This is bar 109. And we play this G. And we let it ring. And the singing comes in. Better than what I was just doing there. I just wanted to give you the idea. So, this is not hard guys from the singing part. I'm just going to walk you through the chords here. We've got a C slash G. Bars of D minor. We come back to C after the G7 for two bars. Then we go back to a G for half a bar. One, two, three. We do our G13. Really love that lick. And now we're up to our final verse, guys. We're nearly there. If you've worked through this whole tutorial, well done. It's probably just you, Nick. It's probably just you here now. But um, you're, you're welcome here. And thank you for hanging around. And suggesting this song. So, final verse. Four, five, six, pick three. Okay, so it just sort of kicks into the strumming on the C9. So. And it pretty much just plays. Everything from the four. All the changes, it all comes together. With a couple of little opens in there as well. You can you can add them as you like. They give you time to get from one chord to the next. So what I'm talking about there is we you know lift, lift, lift. Okay, so from here, this is the end of the song. This is the outro right here. Right at this point, I'll put that in the chapters. Doing the chapters is painstaking, but I feel like it's probably really helpful for you guys. So, at this point, we've come back to C slash G. I've got that down for 2-4. 
two bars, but I believe it's actually just the one bar. So it should be... No, no, it's two. So it should actually be two bars of C, by the way. I messed that up, so... Outro. So what did I do? I played the C. Two bars of that. A7. Two bars of that. I don't need to show you that again. Then from the D. One, two, three. E, e major. So we're just going to move this chord up. Don't worry about the first string. Five, seven, seven, seven. Then we go to an E chord. That's seven, nine, nine, nine. Eight, ten, ten, ten. So. Just keep moving it up. That's an F. F sharp. Stop on the G. I said stop on the G, not past it, Adrian. Um, tenth fret on the fourth string. It's just a bit of a C minor pentatonic lick here, kind of. Ten, eight, and eight. This is a little bit of that whole rockabilly thing, so we're getting the six there instead of the flat seven in the scale. It's, it's its own scale. So uh, G. So we stopped on the G. Ten, mash the eight and eight on the third and second. 10 and 10 on 3rd and 2nd, pick the 10, slide up to the 11, come back to the 10, with the, the again, double stop, 3rd and 2nd string, 8 and 8, 10 and 10, just like that, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, F major, just your good old, the first one you learn and hate, flatten your first finger to encompass the first fret on the 3rd string, and C slash G. And uh, then we finish with the C sharp 9. So you know how to play a C9, just play it one fret higher. Come back to the C9. And that's it. Yeah! Alright, I'm really excited. Because uh, that was a big one. That was huge. That was. That transcription is 11 pages. It might be the longest one. Not necessarily the most detailed. But still plenty of details. It was long. It was long. And this is a long video. This is going to be a 40 minute tutorial. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed. Check out the Patreon. Obviously, if you've come this far, you're getting heaps out of the lessons. Maybe jump on there. Chuck me a couple bucks a month if you can afford it. And you know what? If you can't and uh, you're really enjoying the stuff, don't be afraid to send me an email and say, hey, listen, do you reckon I could grab a transcription of this or that if you you know really need it? Because um, that's, that's okay. You know, I really appreciate that you're here doing the work. That's what it's all about. So guys... Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.